It was the day of the particle picnic, and everybody was there. The pups had already tried an egg race, thrown some bean bags, and hopped on one leg around a circle. They were having a ball. Right beside me, a huge basket of yummy and delicious goodies lay waiting for lunchtime. The pups had worked hard to put the whole picnic together. I wasn't even allowed to look. Smudge had organized everything, and no one knew for sure what we were having. I was looking forward to my lovely picnic lunch. But it looked like I might have to wait because a huge game of hide and seek was starting. Philippe was the organizer, and he said he wanted everyone to play. Of course, it was really hard to hide a fire truck, so I was home base. Bilko started counting. I watched as everyone raced off to find a place where no one else could see them. It wasn't that easy either because so many people were playing the game. There were shrieks. <laughs> At giggles, one person would find a good hiding place, and as they hurried to get it, they discovered that someone else was already there. Then they had to jump up and race around and find another. Everyone was having fun. Finally, Bilko called out. He was coming. At first, he didn't find anyone. And Tanker stole home. He touched me before Bilko even knew he was out of hiding. Then Bilko and Angora had a great race for home. Bilko touched me a second before Angora. It was so much fun. Next there was hunting and finding and shouting and calling until all of a sudden there was a shout of a different nature. Everybody at the whole picnic stopped and kept quiet. When the shout came again, we all knew it wasn't a happy call. Someone was in trouble. Dilly and Farah, who were hiding in a tree, jumped down and joined Smudge and Tanker. They raced toward the voice. I got as close as I could. Montelier the moose told us that he had been happy to find such a great place to hide. It was right behind a bush, perfect for moose hiding. He jumped right over the bush to get there, but he didn't realize that on the other side of the bush there was thick black mud. Now, usually he wouldn't have sunk down so far, but because he jumped so high, he sank low into the mud. It was up to his knees. The pups were very careful not to step in it. They walked around trying to figure out how best to pull the real muddy moose out. Montelier was so glad to see the pups, he relaxed. He knew they'd come up with a good plan. The pups thought and looked from every angle. Then they thought some more, until Dilly came up with a really fun plan. She took a rope from our rescue box and she made a lasso. She threw it around Montelier's antlers. They weren't all that big, but big enough to catch the rope. Then Dilly and Tanker put the rope over an old stump with the splitter. It held the rope steady. Now the rope went from Montelier's antlers over the stump. Dilly asked all her friends to grab hold of the rope and slowly pull. Everyone found a place. When they first pulled, Montelier almost went in nose first. But as the friends held the rope tight, Montelier used it to balance. He lifted up one foot, and then the other, and the other, and at last the other, and slowly he clumped through the heavy mud and soon was completely out. Montelier was so glad to be back on firm ground. He thanked the pups and all his friends. Everybody was happy to have helped. But with all the pulling, they'd worked up big appetites. Everyone headed for their baskets to enjoy their picnic lunch. Oh, and if you're wondering, Montelier did wash himself off before eating. Well, the pups came over to me. We all waited for Smudge to surprise us with our picnic lunch. Smudge opened up the basket, but he didn't let anyone see inside. First, he pulled out beautiful hand-drawn napkins that Farah had made. We were all excited to get one. Next, he pulled out the knives and forks. Tanker had wrapped each one in a bright yellow ribbon. 
Then we watched as beautifully decorated paper plates came out. Everybody clapped for dinner. After that, Smudge pulled out a terrific decorated food box. Smudge had drawn the picture himself. By now, lots of the other friends at the picnic came to see what was happening. I think that was because we were having so much fun. But I knew something was wrong when I noticed Smudge's face. It changed as he picked up the food box. What we discovered when he opened it was that it was empty. Everybody was shocked, especially Smudge. There was a big gasp as all the friends realized that although we had beautiful things to eat our food on, we had no food. <laughs> then Smudge started to giggle. <laughs> And, and each pup joined him, and so did all the other picnic friends. The, the pups had been so busy making our picnic beautiful, they forgot the main ingredient, food. <laughs> now, you might think that I raced home and got some, but no. Instead of that, everybody at the picnic gave us a little bit of theirs. And soon, even Tanker had to say, no more, please, because we had more food than four pups and a big old fire truck could ever eat. And do you know, when we all talked about it, we realized that it's fun to prepare a surprise, but it's better if everybody doing it knows the plan. And we also learned a wonderful thing. When your good friends sharing is a lot 